welcome all of you on this wonderful journey where every time we meet a personality who has made significant contribution in their professional undertakings. The common thread of the series is that all these people are long-time meditators. And when people are as successful as these guests are, we want to hear from them how meditation helps them. In this episode, we have not one but two guests, the duo of the much-acclaimed band Seven Eyes. Their style is far from conventional and is best described as ever-evolving world music that is a harmonious blend of diverse cultures, languages and musical genres. Their compositions transcend multiple genres, jazz, Brazilian, Sufi, Hindustani and Western classical. So first of all, Tanya and Paulo, congratulations on your journey thus far and also on your two albums, The Seed and Senses, which I understand have been enthusiastically received by audiences in the UK, Europe, North America, Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. So Paulo and Tanya, I know you both continuously travel worldwide performing and you performed at the United Nations in New York, you in Geneva, TEDx Malaysia, Jashne Rehta Festival in New Delhi, Fairs International Festival in Nahor. You are regulars on BBC Asian Network, BBC Urdu, BBC World, YouTube, etc. And I have seen various interviews of you and there is an element of your lives which remains yet untouched and you know what I'm talking about. The fact that you both have meditation as an integral part of your lives and when you're as acclaimed and accomplished as you both are, it is important for people to hear from you as to how you benefit from meditation, what you have to say to listeners listening to you. I continued meditating throughout my life and have always been part of the Sahaj community growing up. Um, so it's always been a blessing for me because I've always had a very big global family, as it were. So, you know, you meet people from different parts of the world who also practice Sahaj Yoga meditation. And it's just such an enriching relationship as well with friends because you go to a, a place that's very deep together and you grow um, together as well. So um, I've been very grateful actually for my experience uh, in Sahaja Yoga throughout my life. When I went back to Brazil, uh, there was a program, a cultural program uh, of Indian music, Indian dance and meditation. They advertise like that and uh, an intro uh, introduction to Sahaj meditation. And uh, that was my uh, contact then uh, with uh, Sahaj Yoga for the first time. And uh, later on, I went to uh, Germany soon after that, uh, when I really, um, when Sahaj Yoga uh, grown on me and uh, I could dedicate more uh, to the meditation and uh, understand better uh, the contact of uh, of um, the contact with with this vibration no, that we can feel on our hand in our body and uh, that was a very important moment uh, for me yeah it's wonderful to listen to how someone gets introduced to something and then starts to immerse themselves into it so paulo what changes did you start experiencing or noticing after you started meditating anything you started experiencing differently so, as I said, in Brazil, I, I received the, the uh, introduction to the meditation, right? So we, we had the uh, first step, uh, which is the realization. And then, uh, but I could e uh, actually feel only that uh, vibration when I was in Germany, um, when another Sahaj Yogi that meditated for so many years, he said, uh, let's uh, do a workshop when uh, vibrationally uh, we work in each other and uh, he basically worked on me and uh, he said now you you can check your vibrations and that moment was the uh, moment that uh, was the realization no, where I felt all the cells of my body uh, kind of exploding in, 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 a, in a kind of ecstasy um, feeling was really powerful really it was it was like a bomb from inside to outside <laughs> and um and from that moment onwards i could uh, then unblock uh, my 
uh, my chakras, uh, the, the perception of, of the vibration on in my fingers, in the tip of my fingers, and in my whole body as well. And from that moment onwards, then I said, uh, it was when I, I realized that I had contact straight to the vital energy that we call Parama Chaitanya. And I don't know, Tanya, if this question is relevant to you or not, because you started meditating really early on. So I'm not sure if it's easy for you to comment on any changes you started noticing. Uh, but if you'd like to add anything here, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, well, I would say that even if you have grown up in a meditation practice, it doesn't necessarily mean to say that you have the easy ride straight away. You know, I think meditation, it's also a very personal experience and one has to, you know, really grow into that depth, into that awareness as as anyone else, whether they were introduced to it as a child or not. And perhaps it's easier that you are around the environment where, you know, you understand about mantras and you understand about the, the power of the mantras. But as a child, you're not really conscious of it um, as such. I mean, I speak for myself. You, you're just in that environment. But I think I really came to want to understand more about the science of the self and the science of the Atma and the science of, of this meditation practice when I was at university. So, or when I was, you know, at an age of 17, 18, 19, I wanted to, to understand it more deeply. And actually that's when I had very deep meditations because my desire was there. And I actually really wanted to um, as Paolo said, you know, really understand this instrument that we have, you know, feel the vibrations and, and understand how, our, how our, our chakras are linked in a parasympathetic way, like throughout our body and how we can balance ourselves accordingly if we are, if we're not in balance, how we can bring ourselves back into balance and, and how we can learn from that experience and it is a very it's one learns from one's own experience because you have to go through the trial and error and really um as Srimataji says be one's own scientist and you know carry out the experiment on oneself to actually prove it to yourself because i think growing up you can experience doubts and questioning and and that's actually very important to do because it allows you to go on a quest, as it were, and to really discover what it means to you. And at that point, I think it becomes more than just a following, more than something you do just because your parents did it. It's more right. validating to yourself right. why you're doing what you're doing. And now that you're adults who have verified for yourselves, how would you say meditation helps you with your personal or professional challenges? I mean, the real world application of it. Um, well, when you are in balance, everything else would be different. Uh, your actions would be different, right? So that can uh, be in your professional level or aspect, you know, your family aspect, social aspect. And uh, all, the, all the areas of our actions would be affected by our, by our inner balance. As, as we are in peace, as we are in harmony. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think first and foremost, it's about also addressing a mental state. You know, when, when um, people think of meditation, now meditation is a very popular thing to do, right? Um, and a lot of people think about visualization or, you know, um, bringing one's state of mind into you know mindfulness and all sorts of things that are you know now trendy but um you know this this thoughtless awareness this silence of thoughts it's not just a blank state of nothingness it's actually a presence of pure being of being in the present moment where one is not necessarily dictated by their thoughts which is i don't i don't see thoughts as being a bad thing but it's just not that we're dominated by them you see so um i think 
when one gets used to the practice of, of trying to attain this thoughtless awareness, as Sri Mataji has taught us, then you start to actually appreciate that you are, you know, going back to what Paolo said about surrendering yourself to a greater power or surrendering yourself to a greater flow. Uh, but uh, it turns that, I mean, uh, the, the, the meditation, it, it, what, what basically does uh, for us is, is put, our sil uh, put our mind in silence. So expanding the space in between the thoughts and, and giving us the appreciation of the moment, of the present moment. And with that, um, in silence, you can then be completely in the present moment for whatever thing you are doing. It can be m music, but it can be any other thing as well. It could be even because you practice Hatha Yoga, no? So you also like a flow of movement or dance or, mm. you know, actually any activity, I think.